This conference will now be recorded. Hello all, good morning and welcome to the day one session of the OIC trading from SSB Technologies. This is Ravi and I have around 11 plus years of experience in the IT industry working as a solution architect in the RP cloud projects and I've been involved in uh, working for multiple clients and multiple organizations yes, and US Swiss service and road based organization for the last 11 years. And my day to day job goal is to design and architect the integrations and cloud projects with other third party systems or other cloud Oracle and non Oracle cloud applications with OIC and uh, designing the complex and uh, in the back integrations or any other third party integrations with other systems as for the client requirement. So this is what I do in my day to day life. So I have started working on RP Cloud way back in 2017. So it's been almost like five years I started working as an RP Cloud and OIC consultant and prior to that I have been working as an RP UPS consultant. So this is about me guys. So before proceeding further I would request you to unmute yourself and uh, Introduce about yourself and set your expectations about this particular time in place. In the place, feel free to unmute yourself and introduce about yourself, one of uh, maybe one of another, all the participants. Hi, Ravi. Hey, hi. Hi, my name is Ranjit. Uh, uh, I have close to 15 years of experience and uh, currently working on a middleware project. I am moved to middleware uh, very recently and I need some, okay. you know, hands on. I'm currently, I used to work as a EDS consultant, like you said. So, worked on uh, Oracle ERP throughout my career and uh, just got an opportunity to work on this middleware piece. And I worked before on the SOA middleware. A uh, little bit okay. here and there, but not, but not hands on. But I used to manage the project and used to do the designs for that and the mapping designs and the other stuff, but not hands on with the so. But I can understand the middleware piece, how it works, and what the things are. Okay, but uh, where I'm struggling now is with the cloud and uh, the current project uh, where we are working all three pieces on cloud, PaaS, SaaS, and IaaS. So okay. that's where. Uh, uh, it's not just one environment where we have cloud. It's everything cloud now. So, yeah. and uh, yeah, it, it's getting a little 
uh, an uneasy with the whole structure how we do in the good old days of EBS here. So especially mm -hmm. I'm working with the AP, APICS. Do you recognize okay. that? Yeah. Yes, Within yes, OIC. Yes. Yeah. So, so that's where I'm struggling with, and uh, I, uh, I was tasked to do something there. And OIC is another thing. The major part where I'm struggling is uh, probably the other attendants might not need these details, but uh, probably we can have an offline chat after this. Okay. Yeah. That that's what my back. Yeah. Thanks, Ranjit. Thank so you. we also have other participants. So can you please unmute yourself and introduce before we proceed further? Attendee six, or is mute? So probably he just joined. He or she. Yeah, yeah. So can you please unmute yourself and other participants? Can you please uh, introduce about yourself, your experience, and any even uh, your experience or your appreciate that should be fine. So can you please introduce about yourself? That's fine. So let us proceed with the session. So, yeah. So, in today's agenda, I would like to discuss about what exactly is cloud computing about and what are the different types of cloud service models that are available with us. And, uh, okay, there's a typo here. Why do we require uh, OIG? And we'll also try to understand in the cloud service models, how these cloud service models will basically help us uh, in uh, performing the task and how this will be incorporated as a part of the cloud computing. And we'll also discuss about why do we require OIC, right? And we'll also, uh, what, what exactly is about, what, what exactly is OIC? And, uh, uh, how does OIC help us with the current IT trend and what kind of what kind of opportunities or what kind of uh, uh, tasks can be performed using OIC and we'll also discuss about We'll also discuss about what are the integration challenges in the current IT trend. And we need to understand why IOC is required and what is OIC as well. Because this will give you a high level overview about the other integration services that are available in the IT industry and what is the advantage that you get when you use OIC as a integration service provider or as a IPAS service provider. And we'll also try to understand what are the different components that are available in OIC. So normally we understand that OIC is one single component. Uh, on the, I mean, uh, when you spell it OIC, just basically breaks down to one single component, but internally it has three different components inside it. The first component is called as integrations where we also used to call it as integration cloud service. The second component is called as process cloud service, which is also abbreviated as PCS. And we also have something called as VBCS, which we also call it as virtual builder cloud service. So we'll get to understand what is the importance of these three components that are available in the OIC and what is the advantage of these three components and when and where to use these components and We'll have a high level details about these components and we'll also try to understand what are the different kinds of flavors available in OIC and we'll discuss about the course content and what are we going to discuss in this course tenure and what 
do the what do participants get once once they enroll to this course is what we'll get to discuss as a part of today's session so what exactly is a cloud and what is cloud computing so as you guys see that as we go to the abbreviation it says that cloud computing is basically a uh, on demand delivery of your computing services or your uh, users of your database or using any applications or any other services which are exposed through a cloud with a proper internet connection and with pay as you go service because you and the main advantage here is without direct active management by the user that means user is not going to manage anything over here just the only thing what user needs to do is he just need to have a proper internet connection and he, he should have a proper subscription to use a particular application so let's just take an example so earlier when we do not have this cloud coming into picture or before we have a cloud what we used to do whenever we used to have any data we used to store the data on our computer hard disks but later at some point of time what we used to do we used to we have uh, if there is some kind of data we need to transfer from one machine to another machine we used to use uh, floppies and then we upgraded to the uh, disks and then in the disks as well uh, where we have this DVD and uh, CDs coming into picture, we used to have relatable DVDs and all these things. And then we have started using your get drives or flash drives or pen drives that we call. And later, later after some point of time, we have gradually upgraded to a external hard disk which will have more storage capacity. But whatever data you are going to store in all these devices, always rely on that device, and you can only access that particular data or the content on that particular device when you plug into a when you plug in that device to a system or a laptop but it is not publicly accessible anywhere but understand the scenario when you are trying to store or upload a document or upload a file in your google drive or your uh, uh, dropbox or any other uh, applications which will basically support which will basically support or enable the functionality of storing the information on a cloud I mean, Google Drive is nothing but it's a cloud service provider which helps you to store the data or which will help you in storing some of the uh, images or it could be videos or anything so it, all these things are stored on a cloud and it is publicly accessible right even if you log in on your mobile device or even if you log in on your uh, computer or if you log in on your friend's laptop with your uh, valid username and password with a particular subscription I mean as Google Drive is free of course you do not need a, I mean you, you just need an account but yes as you have all these things you will able to access the content of your Google Drive on any machine correct if that is connected to a proper internet here as a end user you are not going to manage anything directly the only thing that you're going to do is you are just trying to upload or, sh or save your uh, data on Google Drive and you are able to access it on any machine which is able to connect to an internet. So this is the advantage that you get with the cloud and the cloud computing because it is seamlessly providing you a flexibility to access applications or access your data or store your data anywhere from any system in the world if you have a proper subscription or if you have a proper internet connection associated to it right now with the help of cloud computing one of the biggest advantage that we get is user no need to manage or a user who is using these applications no need to manage or no need to take care of anything you just need to have an invalid internet connection so let's see if you can example of you accessing your to gmail when you log into your gmail right we are not taking care of the authentication we are we are just only creating the connection uh, creating a new account and we are trying to log into that particular gmail account with the valid credentials and if the credentials are valid or not or if he is basically authorized or supposed to 
access a particular account or not or access this application or not is always controlled by your cloud service provider right so what exactly is happening your cloud computing is providing you a simple way to access the storage devices or some broad set of applications that you have across your internet and these services are distributed across multiple locations and each and location or each and every location where these devices are enabled are called as data centers so let's just try and understand what exactly is a data center so and we'll also see how exactly a data center basically looks like so what would ideally happen if you observe this is how your data center basically looks like and you have every cloud service provider right every cloud service provider will maintain their own data centers like this which are like very huge in volume and each and every data center will basically have Will basically have a capability which will help you to store your data deploy your applications into a servers and this will have high-end networking capabilities and high-end internet capabilities to access and provide this data at a real time and ideally these data centers will be really really huge see uh, it just look and in this picture as it is an aerial view it might be uh, showing very small thing but we, it might be showing very as a very small picture but we just compare right this is one of this is one of the data center of google right if you observe here oh, my bad if you observe this picture closely right you get to see there's a truck available over there you can see the truck over here right if you compare the size of this building with respect to this particular truck you get to see what is the span and what is the how huge this building is correct so the main advantage of these data centers is these will give you a flexibility this will give you a flexibility to go ahead and have multiple racks and multiple servers inside it which are connected to an internet and with high end computing and high end processing speeds so me as a cloud service provider so whenever you are going to create your google or gmail account you get to see that you are going to get some access to your gmail google drive is a separate application Google Focus is a separate application and you have Google Documents as a separate application and uh, you have some n number of applications which are coming into picture which are freely accessible for your use for you and and apart from that you also get a free storage space of 15 GB correct so all these applications will be will be deployed into this particular servers and this particular server is not only uh, an application server but we will also have some kind of database which can be which will be in, involved in it which will give you a flexibility to go ahead and which will give you a flexibility to go ahead and store some data and access the data at a real time so this is how a data center looks like so this data set, with the advantage of this cloud and data centers me as a end user i no need to go ahead and I no need to go ahead and manage or manage or maintain any of my infrastructure because this infrastructure is always hosted by infrastructure is always hosted by some other third party service provider and we are just trying to use it and we are going to pay a proper subscription to that so this is how a cloud computing works and this is the basic technology behind the cloud computing and any cloud service provider either it could be oracle either it could be uh, 
it could be uh, your Microsoft or it could be your Amazon or it could be your uh, Google anyone who are using will have the similar kind of services which will be accessible over internet and for every cloud computing or when for a, when you take any cloud service provider right you have basically different types of cloud service models coming into picture so traditionally when we look into any on-premise application so in our scenario as most of the participants are from the ebs background so let's just try to understand these things in detail so when you have an oracle ebs application that you're going to work work along with you get to see that you get to see that each and everything on your oracle ebs which is an on-premise on application involves your managing your database managing your networking capabilities managing your application servers and db servers and managing your uh, operating i mean installing your operating system so that your application could run on on it seamlessly and should always make sure that your application is always up and running and you should always have a flexibility to render your application when a user requests for a particular url and there should not be any latency issues or there should not be any network issues in app in accessing this application right so you manage each and everything over here you manage each and everything over here and as you understand that if you have uh, been to any client location or if you have been to any data center uh, where you have on-premise applications involved right if you go to an in our abs client and if they have a dedicated server room which will have all this infrastructure like your net your servers racks storage devices you they have their application servers database servers and very huge volumes of racks uh, in, inserted inside it uh, or available inside it and only a proper network administrator or database administrator will have access to it and he will only control or he will only take care of administrating all these tasks but in the cloud service model you have something called as infrastructure as a service which is also referred as iaas it's called as infrastructure as a service in the infrastructure as a service your network your server capabilities your backend database your backend application servers and your uh, uh, racks and your networking and virtualization everything will be managed by your everything will be managed by your cloud service provider that means you are going to you are going to subscribe for a particular server let's say you wanted to install an oracle EBS or if you wanted to install an application on a particular device so what will have what will you have for every application you will have a specific requirements of an operating system you will have a specific requirements of your uh, uh, hard uh, your hard disk and you'll also have a specific requirements of your uh, processing speed and networking capabilities correct so what are we trying to do the networking capabilities the processing speeds and the hardware is what we are going to subscribe from the cloud service provider and installing the operating system and enabling the functionality to access this data or application from this particular uh, uh, storage devices is what maintained by you so uh, you do not have a flex you do not need to manage or maintain your maintain your applications backend infrastructure all this infrastructure would be managed and maintained by your cloud service provider or your vendor and you only take care of how do you want it to access these applications and what kind of operating system you wanted to put on these applications and what kind of middleware you wanted to use is will be decided by you and you will be managing all these things and there's one more cloud service model called as platform as a service in this platform as a service the only thing that you're going to maintain is you are only going to go, go ahead and do it your what kind of application you wanted to develop and what kind of applications you wanted to install on your servers is decided by you and how the data is managed is also decided by you but rest of all the things are managed and maintained by your cloud service provider only this is giving us a flexibility to use a custom application or develop a custom application and host it on a internet so when you're developing any custom web application let us say uh, 
let's take an example when you are basically when you basically develop an EDS form or a report what we basically do once the form is completed or once the report is completed we either move the our uh, rdf file into the application server or the fmb fmb file into the, ser and the application server and when you move this into your application server what will basically happen you need to re reach out to your dba because your dba is the person who is going to give you the access and is going to maintain all these things correct but here when you are going with the pass model you do not need to have a dba because all these things will be managed by your vendor. He'll, your vendor will take care of managing all these things and you only need to develop the applications and where to deploy is what you choose over here. And all the deployment perspective and all the backend infrastructure maintenance and the operating system maintenance and everything will be done by your vendor because you say that boss, I would need a machine with a hard disk of 500 terabytes or uh, uh, one uh, 500 terabytes is what we're going to tell them and this operate on that particular machine i should have a high-end processing speed to run this application and i should have a proper operating system is what you're going to say and once you tell all about all these things they will provision a system for you and you just develop your application and you deploy your application on top of it that's it and we have one more service model called as software as a service so in the software as a service everything that you get to see here is completely managed by your cloud service provider or by your vendor you no need to do or maintain or manage anything the only thing you need to do is just start using your application the best example for this is our day-to-day -day life what we use is your gmail correct or even your uh, uh, Outlook in your organization environment or OneDrive in your organization environment, correct? So what do you basically do? You just log into the Gmail. So whenever you log into your Gmail, it's it's your Google's responsibility to go ahead and show all the emails that have been received by you, or received by you, and all the emails that have been sent by you, and all the emails that have been starred or drafted by you. So storing your emails, fetching your data at the real time and all these things and what is the middleware that is being used to fetch these details and what is the application development methodology they have been taken and how this application is basically running and everything is not in the hands of a business user or end user it is completely maintained and managed by your vendor right you just start using this application and for using this application your vendor might charge you a subscription price on a monthly basis so this is a high level overview of your cloud service models now let's say man we have discussed about all these things but let's just try to see a worry example about what exactly is infrastructure as a service what is pass and what is SaaS. with a example so let's say you try to you wanted you thought of eating a pizza you have four options the first option is you try to make this pizza at home a second thing is you just go to a grocery store get a uh, get a ready-made uh, I mean, whatever you want it's a ready to cook thing and you just get the ready to ready to cook op, uh, option pizza available in your store and you just bring that to your home and you cook it for yourself and the third option that you have is you just call to a pizza service uh, delivery guy and that guy will get, get the pizza for you and the third and the fourth option is you just go out and have your dining go to dynod and eat a pizza over them so what is the advantage you get or what is the option that includes in each and everything so we will discuss that first one is a on-premise or traditional methodology correct in a traditional methodology let's say you're trying to make a pizza in your home so you need to take care of having a creating a, a making a pizza dough or making your own sauce or having a sauce available with you or you need to take care of uh, creating your uh, i mean having your cheese cutting all the vegetables on your own and uh, you need to have your own electric or gas stove you need to have your own dining table and you need to have your own fire and oven to cook the pizza and once the pizza is ready you need to have a table to eat your pizza correct so this everything here will be managed by you and organized by you in case of your traditional on-premise application but when you go for a when you go for an infrastructure as a service which is IaaS you can consider it as a ready to cook food that is available outside that means there is some set of ingredients and there is some set of uh, things that have been already available over there and some of the 
the food is partially cooked you just bring it home you don't need to take care of creating a pizza dough you don't need to have a tomato sauce or topping sauce is nothing is required what you need to do is just get the item from the grocery store put it on fire or just put it on an oven and then bake it just once it is completed eat, eat it that's it so this is go removing the overhead of creating all the pizza dough tomato sauce and all these things on your own that means whatever is required to make a pizza right that is not necessary for you that you are not managing or maintaining that you're just trying to get that from a grocery store and you are baking it on your home because in your home because it is ready to cook and eat correct but coming to the next service provider it's a next cloud service model which is platform as a service in the platform as a service what will ideally happen you are trying to order for a pizza for a home delivery so nothing is maintained by you just make a call they will get a pizza for you the only thing is you need to manage your drinks and your dining table to eat the pizza and here there is again some of the manual intervention that is required by you but coming to the last model which is software as a service nothing should is maintained or managed by you what you're going to do you're just simply moving to a dining store or you're going to a dine out and you're ordering a pizza those guys will bake the pizza for you you sit on a prop you sit on a dining you sit on a table that is covered over by there and they get your pizza to your table and you eat it and you just pay for the bill and you just come out right so here nothing is managed by you. the only thing that effort is required by you is the manual effort to go and travel to the store right so this depending on your cloud environment or depending on the way how your organization want you to uh organization wants to implement or use a cloud services you will choose either one of your cloud service model and your oracle integration cloud service which is one of the cloud service model from oracle falls under your platform as a service model So this is basically how your cloud service model basically works about and these are the different types of cloud service models so your oic basically falls under this cloud service model now we have some other cloud service providers in the market available and each and every cloud service provider has their own type of service models coming into picture which is ias pass and sas right and our oic basically falls under this platform as a service oic falls under this platform as a service model and we need to understand what exactly is this oic and why is this oic helpful and how it will be this how it will basically help or solve the real time problems let's just take a scenario for a moment in today's environment let us say when we are working in a IT industry or when you have any client that is basically is a fortune 500 client or any of the client who is trying to move to the cloud you cannot say that your organization is always using only one specific set of application for their day-to-day -day operations correct so what will ideally happen is let's take an example of requisition to fulfillment process or the end-to-end -end business process where your business process basically starts where you are trying to create a purchase order or a purchase requisition in your procurement cloud right and that should tightly get coupled with your oracle supply chain management because your inventory is where is being maintained in your scm cloud and whenever you procure a cloud procure a you item or you raise a purchase order for a particular supplier once the good is received the received the receiving of the goods and everything is always maintained and managing managing your procurement cloud only correct and that is going to finally hit your inventory but your inventory is going to get managed in your supply chain management cloud so you need to have an interaction between all these things and whenever you're trying to create a purchase order right you are trying to make a payment and fulfill the invoice for your supplier and for this supplier when you're trying to make a payment that again involves your oracle financials right and your financials payables module will come into picture to make a payment to the supplier and again 
it, it get reflected in your general ledger module and also in your cash management module for maintaining and managing your business accounting and once the invoice is fulfilled you are going to make a payment to receive right now if we consider about this process only with the oracle technology these are the things that are involved but you never know your client can go and say that boss for managing my as a as a part of my procurement load i will now choose to use an sap application and as a part of the supply chain management i can either go for a jda or infor these are the other kind of erp system that are available with us and you also can make sure your client can also have a, a alternative of using microsoft dynamics or oracle net suite or oracle e business suite as a part of their as a part of their financials implementation so your client has a landscape of using multiple applications and these applications need to talk to each other seamlessly in order to have a proper business flow so everything here is decoupled because each and every system is different and you need to also have a real time analytics about how this data is being interacted from one system to another system and how the end to end process flow is basically running out right so to achieve this when we are on the oracle ebs node or when we are using any on premise applications it was quite easy for us because we used to have a access of database and we used to have a point to point integration approach which will help us to interact with multiple applications but now consider the same scenario in a cloud space right when the cloud has been evolving in the market the entire integration architecture and the way how the applications are interacting with each other has been completely changed but first and foremost thing why a person should go ahead and use cloud or why a client should basically go ahead and implement cloud so as we have discussed with the cloud service models we might have understood something like whenever you are going to a cloud service model there is something which is always involved to either manage on your own when you are going to your uh, when you are going to on premise model you are going to manage everything on your own but when you are going to your cloud service model you are getting a leverage of managing only a partial part and rest of the thing is always taken care by your cloud service provider so what would ideally happen is like let's say when you wanted to go ahead and install an uh, impl uh, in, uh, go and implement an oracle ebs for your client so for the first and foremost thing what do you as an implementation expert go and tell your client boss for installing or for implementing oracle ebs in suite this is a bare minimum infrastructure that is needed by you and what your client will do your client will basically need to spend some millions of dollars maybe depending on how big the organization is to procure the entire infrastructure that is required for installing the application or installing the required operating unit or installing the operating system and networking networking capabilities to run that application seamlessly this task should be done before your client is basically implementing and actually start using it correct so there is a lot of overhead involved as in your client as a part of the basic as a part of the basic cost which is the capital expenditure that is incurred in procuring your servers and infrastructure but when you choose a cloud model right what basically happens is your client is having a flexibility to convert this capital expenditure that is being basically invested on the infrastructure as a operational expenditure that means your client is physically not procuring any infrastructure that is needed for installing these applications they are simply trying to hire or rent that infrastructure that is required from a proper cloud service provider right so this is this particular infrastructure from your client might cost you around like let us say some 100000 dollars is what example we will say but that initial investment of 100000 dollars is now not required because your client is taking this particular infrastructure as a rental basis from your cloud service provider and rather than investing 100000 dollars in one single go 
he will get a leverage of paying a subscription price of five thousand or ten thousand dollars per month for using the infrastructure from a particular cloud service provider. So in this way, what is happening? Your client is saving the initial cost that is incurred in initial cost that is incurred in procuring the infrastructure, right? That is the first and foremost advantage that you get. And when you go with the SaaS model, everything is maintained and managed by your cloud service provider, and you no need to go ahead and even need a DBA or any administrator to manage your task because everything is maintained and managed by your client. Now, as a client, I am going to use an on -term, I am going currently on on premise application. So I am using an Oracle business suite and I wanted to make sure that my entire e business applications landscape of financials, human capital management, CRM applications, supply chain management applications, and uh, the ordering applications, everything, everything I wanted to move uh, and I decided to move from on premise to cloud. So what will your cloud service provider basically do is like they will in the gone or those days where a client will basically go ahead and get all the services from only one particular vendor. Now, as we have a lot of options available in the cloud, what is your client basically doing at the moment is they try to choose a product from different cloud service providers, which is of lower subscription price and which is having a higher demand in the market. Let's take an example. Salesforce is one of the first cloud service model that has been introduced in SaaS application style or one of the first CRM application that has been introduced in the market as a part of the cloud service provider or a part of a cloud subscription. Initially when Salesforce is launched, people has not thought that Salesforce would become such a huge game changer on the CRM space and cloud will have a such a huge impact on the IT industry. Now people have now chosen to go ahead and subscribe for the cloud service subscriptions from multiple service providers. So if I wanted to go ahead and use an Oracle CRM product compared to Oracle CRM product your Salesforce comes with a lower subscription cost and me as a client who is currently using a CRM product on an Oracle uh, on-premise environment will now go ahead and choose to use a Salesforce as my CRM product on the cloud environment but I still wanted to use the Oracle Fusion applications for managing my financials and supply chain management. So what should I do? I should have an integration that should come into picture with my Oracle Fusion application with the Salesforce applications, which will try to have a real time synchronization as a part of my day to day business needs. And one of the example that we could take is let us say when you're trying to create a Custom when you try to create an account account is nothing but a customer in Salesforce environment and once a particular account is created in a Salesforce environment that particular account should be automatically created as a customer in your Oracle fusion application or in your Oracle ERP cloud. So this you can because you cannot go ahead and ask your client boss go ahead and create the same customer again in your Oracle ERP cloud is what you cannot say and tell your client. Your client expects uh, that as an anyway creating an account in the Salesforce application, that account should automatically get synced at a real time into my Oracle ERP cloud so that I can start creating an AR invoice or creating or I can start receiving a order from the customer is what your client would expect. So you need to have a synchronization between your Salesforce application and your Oracle Fusion application at a real time. And this is one of the example that we are going to deal in our uh, training as well. And the second uh, and the second uh, example that we can also take it for take it take ahead is let us say you are as we have discussed that your client is using your Salesforce as a CRM application. Now once your application is a CR uh, and whenever you are using this as a CRM application, there could be a scenario where there could be a scenario where you wanted to your customer has created you have created a claim for your customer claim is nothing but you have, your customer has purchased a product from you and that product is damaged and you wanted to return back his amount. So there is something called as a claim process and that gets created in the Salesforce application and your financials is completely managed in your Oracle Fusion application. 
So what you need to do that particular claim that is raised in Salesforce should be now should be now created as an invoice in your Oracle Fusion application so that you are trying to make a payment for that invoice and the amount gets related to the customer account is what we need to develop. So that is a requirement. So what you need to do, you need to have an interaction or integration with the Salesforce to your Oracle Fusion application and this Fusion application will have an invoice created and that invoice will be paid to the customer. So here it, it is a customer in the Salesforce that will internally get migrated as a supplier or a, a invoice. So when you make a payment for an invoice, you are trying to just simply create a beneficiary invoice so that you'll just have a bank account and all the details coming into picture and you will take that bank account and everything into consideration and make a payment for the invoice from the Oracle Fusion application. So once the invoice is cleared, that is one will get created to the supplier uh, to the customer account that for a claim that is used in Salesforce and you need to communicate back to the Salesforce saying that boss payment is cleared so that the claim can be closed in the Salesforce application. This is one kind of interaction where we are trying to deal with multiple cloud applications and the third and one more you can also have one more scenario where your customer is on financials cloud your customer is on human capital management cloud on oracle and your customer is also on supply chain management cloud on oracle so as these three are three different oracle cloud products they need to have a seamless interact in interaction between them to prop to frame a proper business flow just the way how we have discussed over here right so all these things are oracle cloud products so each and everything should have a proper interaction with between them to complete an end-to-end -end business process so what are we trying to do right now so this things should get interacted with each other to have a seamless business process completed and the, you have one more scenario which is a third scenario where you have an application that is coming into picture which is on on premise by the nature of the application or the way how this application has been developed you cannot take this application at any cost to your cloud environment because that is how this application has been designed or that application has been implemented and this is one of the critical application in your client environment so what you need to do you are on oracle erp cloud on fusion and there are some applications that you need to interact seamlessly which are on on-premise environment or your client environment and you need to have an integration or interaction between these two applications so that your business process will run seamlessly so this is one more scenario where you need to interact with your cloud to cloud with the same service provider a cloud to cloud between multiple service providers and cloud to on-premise applications between same or different vendors so in order to address all these integration challenges your oracle integration cloud service has a flexibility which will give you a high-end integration between your on-premise to cloud applications cloud to cloud applications from the same vendor and cloud to cloud applications from different vendors so all these issues can be addressed by using your oracle integration cloud service so we have just dis discussed what are the integration challenges right so that we have discussed that legacy integration is always too complex so earlier when you have uh, your oracle on-premise environment for eds environment you always used to have a point-to-point -point integration but here there is no capability of doing a point-to-point -point integration because some of the applications are relying on the cloud and some of the applications are relying on the on-premise environment so that cannot be done right now so that needs to be addressed so here data cannot be moved from hybrid environment hybrid environment is nothing but your application environment is on cloud and on premise so this is called as hybrid environment right and your business process automation should always be aligned that means whenever you are trying to create an integration between data flow from on premise to cloud application you also need to have a proper workflow and approvals defined so that until or unless a person is approved is for giving an approval manually either by an email or by click by doing a particular task your data should not flow from your on-premise to cloud so you have a particular automation required to have this data movement so that will also be a huge challenge and most of the 
important task that is coming into picture is the analytics part so this is where your business can decide on how much revenue they're going to generate when they are going to use this application because at the end of the day your client is looking about the revenue when when they're doing some business and how well your current application is giving you the flexibility to perform an analytical or provide an analytical information on the operation that has been taken care on the environment is also required to them correct so taking all these things into consideration these are all the integration challenges that can be addressed and these integration challenges can be simply addressed by your oic because your oic which is an oracle integration cloud service is having a flexibility to establish an integration between your cloud to cloud services and cloud to on-premise environments as well and it is always a configuration or a zero code approach you no need to write any single piece of code to develop an integration how complex it is each and everything is always done and managed by a configuration approach and as we have discussed that oic has three different components one is the integration second one is a process cloud service and third one is a visual builder cloud service currently we have some other integration cloud service providers I mean some other pass provi service providers which will help you to have an application integration and we have some providers like mulesoft informatica tipco uh, boomi from dell i think the dell has sold the product to some other organization and we have some other products which are enabling this functionality to you but oic is the only integration product that is available in the market which gives you a flexibility to develop your custom applications for mobile and web using your vbcs and also develop a custom business process automation using your process cloud service so oic not only allows you to integrate multiple applications which are both oracle and non-oracle applications apart from that it is also giving you a flexibility to go ahead and develop your custom web and mobile applications and also develop your custom business processes your business process is nothing but you can relate it to a workflow as your in your EBS environment so that this oic tool is giving you that flexibility and no other integration product that is available in the cloud is giving you these options in the market that is the game changer and that is one of the biggest advantage oic is having in the market and oic is a combination of three different products which is application integration process automation and visual builder your application integration is the one which is giving you flexibility to integrate applications across cloud cloud and on-premise cloud at different customers and different on-premise applications as well and process automation is the one which basically gives you a flexibility to go ahead and develop a particular business process let us say if an invoice has been created in a third party system that should be now first approved by the user and then only that app, that invoice should be going around you should initiate a payment in sap system if your client is using an sap as a payment uh, as a financials so this kind of business process automation can be designed in your client environment with help of pcs and if you wanted to define any custom applications or design any custom mobile and web applications that can be done completely by using your oracle visual builder cloud service right so let's just jump into the oracle oic instance and see how oic is basically uh, uh, looks like and how the instance basically looks like and how do you access this instance and we'll also discuss this particular part that we have said that the development approach that we follow in oic is purely a configuration based approach that means you are not writing any single piece of code here correct everything what you're going to do is purely a configuration based approach so let's just try and understand how how oic will basically look like and what are the options and we'll also try to understand the navigations at a high level so when you when you go ahead and start using any 
when you go and start using any OIC application, the only, the first and foremost thing is you receive a you receive a URL from a client like this, and it will ask you to it will ask you to provide a valid username and password credentials. And once it is or once these credentials are authenticated and authorized credentials are valid, once you click on sign in, it will take you to the application home page like this. Right? It will take you to an application home page. You can have multiple OIC environments which will give you a flexibility just by simply accessing a URL. And that will bring you to land on a particular page, right? You can have multiple OIC, each and every, any OIC environment that you basically access will have a simple URL and you basically land on a page like this, right? And as I mentioned, right, OIC has a flexibility to go ahead and integrate with your on premise and cloud applications as well, correct? So once you go to the integration, you have multiple options. So you, this process will basically help you in developing the business processes using your process cloud service. And your visual builder is the one which is basically helping you to create your web and mobile applications using your visual builder cloud service on the OIC console. And if you go to your integration perspective, the biggest advantage that you get with OIC is with respect to the adapters because these adapters are the one which are pre-built by Oracle and which are pre-installed and this will give you the flexibility to connect with any system that is hosted on cloud or any system that is available in on-premise environment. So let us say you name an application. Let's say your client is using both Oracle Cloud and SAP system, and you wanted to integrate both of them. If you just look for an SAP adapter, you have an Oracle SAP adapter, SAP S4 HANA adapter, and you have SAP Commerce Cloud adapter, right? So these adapters are the one. These adapters are the one which will give you a flexibility. Which will give you a flexibility. To go ahead and which will give you a flexibility to go ahead and connect with any third party system that is available in the market or that is available in your client environment. Right? That is each and every application that is available in your client environment can be. Integrated with respect to your adapter. So when these adapters are required when you create a connection So let us say when you're trying to create a connection and you wanted to interact with your Oracle ERP cloud application Right you get to see that if I am on Oracle ERP cloud. I can just Use or select this particular adapter To go ahead and create or establish a connection To this particular application so not only there are when you just type an oracle you get to see you have you have cloud products and you have your oracle e-business which is an on-premise environment you're an oracle database which is an on-premise environment and you have your oracle siebel and you have your oracle uh, uh, even you have your next suite applications and everything that will come into picture which can give you a flexibility to connect to both your cloud and on-premise environments and let us say you have a requirement where you come and tell me that boss I have an I have an application on my client environment that is not on cloud and I do not see a proper adapter over here right I do not see any adapter for that particular application because that is a client in-house application purely developed by the client and I do not see an adapter over here so how do I go ahead and Create an integration to the client's third party system which is available on premise using an OIC. So, what is the 
approach or what would be my approach to perform this integrations to these systems so the answer for this what yc provides you is you either have a third party system which is relying or which is interacting with the database or your third party system will definitely have a capability or if it has a capability of connecting over internet and exposing any web service either on soap or rest you can directly interact with them so let us first take the scenario where your third party system is purely depending on a database so what will oracle oic will give you a flexibility is oracle oic will give you a flexibility to connect with your ibm db2 your oracle database your oracle database or you also can interact with mysql server right these are the most commonly used on premise database environments for developing your client third party application so if your client third party application is using any one of these databases you can directly interact with them using the oic or the second option that we have just chosen which is where your client application is hosted on a uh, internet or it is a web application and that is having a flexibility to expose a web service so what you can do is you can just make use of your rest or your soap services to connect your clients in-house third-party system using an oic but if let's take an example where your client is having both salesforce so you can just go and connect to your say establish a salesforce connection using a salesforce adapter and i will create a salesforce connection over here by using the salesforce adapter and i'll also create one more connection to oracle ebs network i'll say oracle erp cloud i'll say this oracle erp cloud i'll choose this particular oracle erp cloud adapter to create one more oracle cloud connection and once the connection is created i'll use this option of integrations to integrate both oracle and salesforce applications so this is one of the integration that we have designed which will which will basically synchronize the accounts created in the salesforce application with the erp cloud customers that means whenever an account is created in a salesforce application you whenever an account is created in a salesforce application you wanted to automatically create that as a customer in your erp cloud so we basically make use of these connections that has been or that we have created using these adapters and we go to the integration console over here and integration canvas will give you a flexibility to develop these integrations so let me just deactivate this integration for a minute and if i just go and click on edit this integration you get to see that all these options that you get to see on the integration canvas is purely a drag and drop approach you have your you have your connections coming into picture or you, or you have you have you have, have your adapters that are coming into picture which will give you a flexibility to go ahead and use them with a configuration approach and even the data mapping how it needs to be moved from one application or from the source to target is also well defined over here with respect to a visual mapper and this visual mapper will give you a flexibility to understand what how the data is being exchanged from one system to another system in a vis visual or drag and drop based approach you no need to write any piece of code over here but let us say you are a SOA developer and you have experience developing an applications or uh, if you are well versed in writing your custom xls 
uh, Excel SDs and uh, uh, developing your transformations, you also have a flexibility to go ahead and write a code over here, which will automatically do the mapping for you in the visual way. So the advantage that you get with OIC is like each and every operation that you perform in the OIC environment is always a configuration and a drag and drop based approach. You no need to go ahead and write any piece of code and whatever are the and whatever are the whatever are the requirements you wanted to achieve, most of the things can be achieved by the pre-built options available in OIC. And if there are any high end level of customizations or any high end level of transformation that is required, then you go ahead and use a libraries. But these libraries will be written in a JavaScript. And almost 99% of the use cases, what you wanted to develop in OIC, can be achieved by the pre built functions available in your Oracle integration you no need to go ahead and you no need to go ahead and create any single piece of code or write any single piece of code to establish a proper to establish a proper integration between two different systems and you you cannot go ahead and create your custom adapters oracle has an adapter that has been created to interact with each and every application and using one particular adapter let us say you have an Oracle ERP cloud connection. One adapter can be used to create multiple connections. Let us take an adapter style, which is a connection style as Oracle ERP. Let me just click on a client. Okay, let's just do one thing. Yeah, let me just say this Oracle ERP club. I click on apply and we get to see that you have multiple Oracle ERP cloud connections available in this OIC instance and all these cloud connections are created using only one adapter called as Oracle ERP cloud adapter. So you have an adapter called as Oracle ERP cloud. And using this Oracle ERP code adapter, which is pre installed by Oracle, you get to see here the complete information and the documentation about it. And using this particular Oracle ERP code adapter, you can create n number of connections in an OIC environment. And once you create a connection, this connection can be used in multiple. Integrations you get to see right this particular connection which is BRT 06 ERP cloud connection which is created using an ERP cloud adapter can be used in multiple integrations as a part of the integration development. So let's just take a pause here to take up any question or any QNS before I proceed further. So any questions from you guys before we proceed further? Yeah, thanks. Ravi. So, just on this point, the last point, which is the connections. Yes, so, please. Yeah, when is my voice audible? Yes, audible I can spirit? hear you. Yes, you know, you yeah. can. I'm audible. You're audible. Please go ahead. So, yeah. So, uh, when we have uh, an adapter to connect to your ERP, uh, yes. What makes you to create these many connections? Once we have one connection to an ERP, why can't we get all the data? Over? Okay, I'll tell you this. Yeah, That's okay. This is, a, this is a training environment, right? So, that is the reason you go ahead and get to see multiple uh, connections. But I'll also give you a scenario where you are trying to create an integration, and you, you your client environment will have three different maybe your client environment will have one of the integration, one of the uh, uh, ERP cloud and ERP cloud environment on a development, one is a development environment. One is a test environment and another is a UAT environment and another is a production environment. Okay, so 
I have an integration and which is currently in a development environment. So before moving it to UAT or before moving it to the test environment, I wanted to make sure if this integration is working properly or not, right? Because this integration needs to move to the higher environment. So what I can do, I can also create one more integrate one more connection to this using the same ERP code adapter to a test environment. I can test this integration to see if it is seamlessly processing before I give it to my business users or to the functional functions to perform an unit you know, testing or a user testing on top of it. Correct. Okay. So that is one test case, one use case where uh, you want to do multi environment test before migrating your script. Into that yes. Sort of yes. Just but ideally, the... but ideally in your client environment, what you basically do is, but the OIC instance also will change for your test development and your production. They cannot maintain one particular OIC environment for all these three things. Correct. So yeah, that's if it is one particular client that you are using, you will only create one ERP code connection and you use a connection with multiple integrations. But as this is a training environment, multiple people will start practicing it. Right? That is the reason you get to see multiple connections with same adapter. Okay. Got it? So on the other note, say I have uh, this uh, Oracle ERP uh, on premise or cloud and I have yes. seven different modules in implemented on it. And I have okay. all the seven modules are interacting with my integration. So my uh, accounts okay. payable going into another system, my receivers so going you into are, Okay, to answer your question, your ERP cloud connection mm -hmm. will support all your procurement, financials, and supply chain management modules. Okay, okay. but if you are specifically looking for HRMS modules, you mm -hmm. need to go ahead and choose one more connection called as Oracle. HCM it's, cloud connection. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This will support all your human capital management operations, including your core HR, payroll, compensation management, absence management, everything. So basically, there is no need to have a module specific connection. So once you have yes. a connection to uh, financials one, this one is one, probably a CM one. Or yes. You are yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'll I'll give you a basic example. So if you see here, or let me just. Tell you some example. So this is a journal import service, right? This is an AR invoice service, and I mean this is a these are the different type of integrations that we have created, and uh, uh, you get to see uh, this is a payables invoice service for performing the payables invoice, journal import, and the AR invoice, or even to perform a uh, procurement operations. I can just simply rely on only one connection called as DRT06 ERP cloud connection which is used in all these integrations see AR invoice service your salesforce integration your journal import service your payables invoice service all these things which are dealing with multiple modules all these integrations which are dealing with multiple modules are being Handled only by using one particular connection, right? Because your ERP cloud connection will have a flexibility to interact with your financials, right. supply chain yeah. management, your procurement, and your order OEM module as well. And for okay. HCM, you go ahead and create a different set of connection, which okay. is Oracle HCM cloud connection. Thanks. Clear? Yeah. Thanks. Is it clear? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Now, so what whatever configuration we are doing it here, whatever connection you are going to do, let's say I wanted to create an ERP cloud connection, or let us say I wanted to create an Oracle eBusiness Suite connection. You just need to provide a name over here. Let me say uh, uh, demo EBS connection. 13 and if I just click on create you observe that you just need to provide the connection URL and you need to provide the username and password and you can just simply click on save that's it your connection will internally use this Oracle eBusiness suite adapter or Oracle ERP cloud adapter that you have 
chosen when you are creating a connection and this will take care of session management right this will take care of your other username and your authorization management and everything so i'll tell you the reason behind it one of the most advantage you get is when you are trying to when you are trying to implement or when or, or when you are trying to create any connection to a particular instance either it could be an erp cloud or either it could be any third party application the first and foremost challenge that you get to see is like you need to have a proper mechanism that comes into picture to validate if this particular user that you are going to provide to log into this instance is valid or not and when and you are interacting it or you are interacting to it from a middleware so definitely you need to have something that needs to be done from your end to maintain this authentication management from the third party system and the second thing is when you how whatever is the way you try to manage to overcome the other authentication mechanism that is being taken care by your third party system and redesign the same thing over here in the middleware the second thing comes into picture is about a session management because when you are trying to run an integration and that integration is running you need to make sure that that session never expires until or unless the integration is completed and during the scope of the integration run the session should never expire correct so all these kind of session management activities and your other client credential authorization management activities and everything will be taken care by your adapters which are pre-built by oracle and as a integration or a middleware developer i am not bothered about what is the mechanism or what kind of programming language i would like to i should know to interact with a salesforce application or to interact with sap application or to interact with a Oracle EBS or an NetSuite application. I am as a developer or an integration developer. I am not considered about this because my adapter will basically do this job for me to provision me a way where I can smoothly connect or interact with the third party systems just by providing the valid URL and the authorization credentials. That's it. And rest of the things, how, what programming language and how to interact with that system is always maintained or managed by your adapters, which are used by your connections. Right. So that is one of the biggest advantage that you get with OIC, because this is the one of the crucial tasks that needs to be taken care in your client environment. And apart from that, to ease the development of a developer, Oracle has also given something called as Oracle Cloud Marketplace. And this Oracle Cloud Marketplace is the one that basically comes into picture where you can go ahead and search for a particular product that is available in your oracle integrations and if let us say there is a requirement where you wanted to interact your salesforce application with your oracle e business suite right so what did oracle do oracle has given some pre-built integrations taking the industry standard requirements to interact both these systems to create a opportunity that is created in a salesforce as a sales order in your oracle e-business suite environment if you are having a client who is using both salesforce system and e-business suite system or if he is a client who is using both salesforce system and oracle e erp cloud system and you wanted to make sure that whenever an opportunity is created in a salesforce system at a in a real time scenario your client is expecting you to create an opportunity in the salesforce uh, uh, create whatever opportunities created in the salesforce again is that opportunity you wanted to create an sales order or an order in an e-business suite or in the erp cloud so as for the industry requirements what are the bare minimum mandates or what are the bare minimum requirements to have a data transfer and to develop this integration, Oracle has given you some of the pre-built integrations which can be used and you can 
make this as a base to develop your integration so that rather than starting everything from scratch you have a flexibility to go ahead and use this as a base and which will also give you a faster time to market rather let us say to develop this particular integration you are trying to spend around two to three weeks of time but using this particular pre-built integration that is given by oracle or a recipe that is given by oracle what you can do if you try to use this integration as a base to develop your integration you might cut down your time you might cut down your time to a week or two weeks and which will allow you to go in a minimal time to the market and use this integration in your client environment you get to see some of the free recipes or uh, integrations provided by oracle and you also get to see there are some paid integrations that will come into picture and there are some kind of organizations which are making a living out of it so you get to see some of the organizations will create these recipes and accelerators and they go to the oracle and they get evaluated from the oracle and if oracle has approved the solution what you get to see you will get to see that this will be hosted in an oracle cloud marketplace and if any client is having this kind of requirement they will just simply go ahead and they will just simply go ahead and use this particular purchase this particular recipe or particular uh, 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 product from the cloud marketplace and use it in their client environment but most of the scenarios are almost 99 percent of those business use cases which require which require interaction between multiple third-party systems as a part of your oracle erp cloud use cases will be hosted by oracle here by default for you as we of first so, okay. so in this case of in this uh, so in this case of uh, using any marketplace uh, integration, uh, uh -huh. it's just that uh, we get the whole code base and uh, we download and then start to use it, right? Yes, there's, we just, we there's just, no issues in terms of proprietary and nothing. No? There is no it's proprietary just, uh, information because this is free of cost from Oracle, okay? So you just, uh -huh. it will give you some details about what is the use case, what how this is being built and it will also give you some integration uh, diagram at a high level and you can just go through this valid use case and if this, you feel that this this is a synchronization between your Zira and NetSuite application correct okay. right so uh, so Zira is a ticketing system right and NetSuite is an Oracle is an Oracle system and if there is any issue that is happening in the Oracle NetSuite system automatically that this particular ticket we should be created in Zira and it should be assigned to a proper uh, uh, person yeah. to take care of this ticket. So this can be implemented by using this use case and you can just simply click on get app, get app and if you have a proper valid credentials with Oracle and if you have a proper uh, uh, Oracle subscription or if you have a proper email, uh, a valid professional email this particular integration and all these details will be sent to your email and you can just use them in your integration for building your integration. Okay. Thank you. Is it clear? Yeah, thank you. So one of the main myth that you get to see with OIC is like people basically think that OIC is the user integration tool that comes into picture to integrate only Oracle products. But if you look into the kind of adapters that Oracle is providing you over here, right? If you look into the kind of adapters that is Oracle is providing you in the uh, Oracle OIC console, you get to see there are a mix and match of both Oracle and non-Oracle cloud and on-premise adapters. And this is a very extensive list right and with each and every release of oic and for each and every quarter oracle will release either a new functionality in the existing adapters or oracle will release a new adapter which will give you a flexibility to go ahead and integrate those systems directly okay 
that is the biggest advantage that you get with Oracle. Now, your Oracle OIC will support both on-premise to cloud and cloud to cloud integrations seamlessly. And whenever you try to create an integration, right? We make use of these connections. These connections are the one which these connections are the one which will act as a base to create your integrations. So the hierarchy goes in such a way that the hierarchy goes in such a way that your adapters will give you a flexibility to get interacted with any cloud or non-cloud or on-premise environment and using a connection right we create a we use we create a connections and these connections internally uses these adapters to communicate with the external systems from OIC and when you are creating any integrations we use the connections and configure them to create an end-to-end -end integration flow between multiple systems between multiple systems right so let us say you wanted to interact with sap and whatever in item is created in sap system you wanted to create that item automatically in your oracle erp cloud because your procurement is there in the oracle cloud system and your inventory management is happening in the sap system so in this scenario can someone of you guys tell me how many different kind of connections do you require to create this integration flow? Okay, so in this scenario, what we require is we, we need a SAP, we need, we, need, we need one connection for SAP system and we need another connect one connection to one connection to Oracle ERP cloud to go ahead and interact with your procurement and these two connections are what we are going to use in your integration to flow the item details or to integrate the SAP and Oracle ERP cloud system to move the item details from SAP to your Oracle procurement cloud as a part of your day-to-day -day business operations okay so you are your connections play an crucial role in designing your integration and whenever you are trying to create any integration Oracle offers you six different styles of your integrations that you can create. And this is one of the questions that you can expect in your interviews when you are looking out for a role for Oracle Integration Architect or Oracle Integration Developer. So what is the difference and what is the advantage with this integration style? We get and depending on what scenario we need to create this integration to choose these integration styles is what we will discuss in tomorrow session and before that i would like to go ahead and also walk you guys through the course content because because before you enroll to a particular session or to enroll to a particular course you 
you should get to know what are you going to get when you enroll here and what exactly is the topic that I have been discussing over here, correct? So let's just try and understand. Let's just try and understand what exactly are you going to cover as a part of this training and what are you going to get when you enroll for this particular training. So we basically get to know about what exactly is OIC in detail. We get to understand the navigations in OIC, how to go ahead and create an OIC instance in your Oracle cloud infrastructure. What are the different kinds of roles available in OIC? What is the importance and differentiation between each and every role? And we'll try to understand the different kinds of navigation that are available in OIC. And once that is completed, we'll also discuss about the basics of web services because, because what would ideally happen is this particular course is targeted not only to a tenured professionals, but a person who is completely a pressure or who is completely new to the code environment. He should have a good amount of understanding about what is a web service. So we are going to discuss about what exact uh, basics of web services and get familiarized with different kinds of web services available and understand how to call these web services or how to use these web services and what is the advantage you get when you interact or when you go and use web services what we are going to discuss in detail and then we will start developing the integrations using OIC. So we will discuss multiple use cases which will revolve around all the different kinds of integration styles all the different kinds of integration styles available in the OIC console and for each and every use case what is the most relevant integration style you need to use and how we go ahead and decide the integration style that we need to choose is what we will basically go and understand as and when we go and push it further and we will also create an integrations which will help you in playing around with files and performing multiple operations on files using OIC and we will develop some integrations which will help you to create a journals in the ERP cloud instance by interacting or by getting a data from your third party system and we will also get to know how to performing the loopings how to create a loop or what kind of options or how to create a, a rest service call or source service call or how to interact with any third party system which is either on cloud or on-premise is what we'll get to see and we'll also see about exception handling and fault handling and notifications that come across in the OIC and we'll also see a use case which will basically deal with calling a REST service available in the Oracle ERP code environment to create an AR invoice or to create a purchase order or to create a payables invoice in the ERP cloud system and we will also see that whenever we have a large volumes of data that needs to be interacted with multiple systems right in ERP cloud ideally we follow an approach called as an FBDA automation we will also see how to automate this FBDA process using an OIC integration and what kind of capabilities will OIC provide you to automate this FBDA process to import bulk data into the Oracle ERP cloud is what we're going to see one, uh, about another use case. And we'll also see some integration that will revolve around a style called as publish to subscribe integration model. So what is this publish to subscribe integration model is about is what we're going to learn. And we'll see how to perform a real-time synchronization between multiple systems using your publish to subscribe integration model. 
and we will also see a use case which will help us in in, in performing an integration between your cloud database to oracle erp cloud and your on premise database to oracle erp cloud and we'll also discuss something about the agents which will help you to integrate your on premise applications with your oic environment and we'll also see a use case which will revolve around integrating your salesforce application with your oracle erp cloud environment and we'll discuss two use cases to integrate your oracle hcm cloud application using your oic right your oracle hcm cloud will also deal with the hrms data or human capital management data and we'll see how to perform a bulk load operation into the hcm cloud and how to perform on directory sync from hcm cloud and transfer this data to the third party application in the real time and we'll also see how to invoke an ess job which is equivalent to your concurrent programs in your eds from your oic environment which are available in erp cloud and how to invoke a bip report that is available in the erp cloud from an or from an oic integration and how to perform an outbound data integration style from oic is what we're going to discuss and how to use these integrations in real time scenario and we will also discuss all these use cases with respect to a real time scenario to understand the integration perspectives and the designs and once integration is completed we are going to start with the dbcs application where we are going to develop an dbcs application which is both web and mobile applications that will help you to interact with the business objects and also with the rest apis and then once the dbcs application is developed we will start understanding the basics of your pcs application and once we start understanding the pcs application to understand and we start developing the basic business process automation using pcs we will work on a mini project which will span across 8 to 10 hours in the scope of this training and this is one of a use case which gives us a flexibility to understand how your oic can interact with vbcs and how your vbcs can interact with pcs and how your pcs can interact with oic right and we are now going to develop an ar invoice web application which will create in vbcs and we will configure it to have an approval workflow and once the approval workflow is configured and it is completely approved in the pcs application we will go ahead and create an invoice in erp cloud and this use case gives you a higher level of understanding about all the interactions that can happen between three different components that are available in oic and integrate with your oracle erp cloud environment and once the mini budget is completed we will look into additional advanced use cases about what is a dynamic process how to use decision models and how to use mix and match processes in oracle pcs applications and we will also try to create a bbcs mobile application build these applications deploy and test these applications in the real time so on the whole this training will span across six weeks starting from monday to friday every day it will be around 1.5 to 2 hours maximum of two hours including your doubt clearing session and we will have this training spanning across 55 to 60 hours approximately so at the max it will it can go to till beyond 65 hours at the max because we are also go ahead and see some more use cases which are not as a part of this course content as well but each and every session will be around for two hours of time which will start from monday and on friday on every week so five days a week we'll have two hour session per day and you are going to get the oic instance access for practice for two months and you'll also get an erp cloud instance access and you'll also get an ftp server 
axis which will be used as a part of this training and during the course of this training we will also help you to understand all the real time scenarios and develop them as a part of the training environment and as a part of your lab exercises and we will also help you in your resume preparation certification preparation and preparing for your interviews and I, whenever we are discussing about this course and whenever we are developing something as in when it is required and as in when the particular topic is being discussed and if in that particular topic if you can expect any questions on your certification exam or any questions in your interview, we will also help you in uh, telling you which topic, topic is important for your interviews and for your certification experience. And we will also give you guidance on your certification preparation and interview preparation and making you ready to transform your careers from a normal EBS or ERP developer to your OIC integration developer. So this is what I have to discuss for today's session. Guys. So before, connecting, uh, before closing the session, if you have any questions or uh, doubts that needs to be clarified in the course content or in the session that has been discussed so far, please feel free to shoot me your questions. Guys. So any questions or doubts in the course content or any questions in the that has been discussed so far. Teacher, sir, uh, uh, are you planning to put anything related to API CS? Sorry? The API CS part of uh, our product. API CS, API CS is not a part of your OIC. API CS is a separate cloud service subscription that is hosted by your OIC. And API CS is a different set of training that is not a part of your OIC training. Do you have any specific training for the API CS? No? Uh, I think you need to check with the uh, institute base about that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they will able to help you with the specific API CS. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. So, any other questions from other participants? Okay, guys. Uh, so, if you do not have any other questions, we'll go to call here. And uh, from when we are going to start this? Uh, yes. Yes, please. Batch from next Monday. So, see, uh, the batch will. So, we'll again connect same uh, same time tomorrow, and the batch will start continuing. And if you are oh. interested, you can enroll and you can reach out to the institute guys, and you can enroll with them, and they'll uh, put you in the in the batch. First. The first uh, four sessions should be uh, demo sessions. I mean, uh, I mean, these we will we'll not have any particular separate demo classes. So the course will be started from day one itself, and you will be uh, allowed to join the meetings or join the sessions for the first four days for three of us. And post that, you will need to enroll with us to continue further with the findings, right? In terms of uh, post Sorry? timing, this is the this is the regular batch timing seven to nine or something. the regular oh, timing. This is a regular batch timing. Seven a.m. Oh. to nine a.m. Indian standard time will be the regular time. Regular time. Oh, fine. Yeah. Thank you. And if you have any other questions with respect to the uh, training and with respect to the timings and all, you can reach out to the should guys and they will be here. Okay. We'll meet again same time tomorrow, guys, and we'll discuss with the remaining part that is available. Thanks for your time, and I hope you enjoy the session. Thanks for your time, guys. Yeah. We'll meet again same time tomorrow. Thanks. Thank okay. Have a good day. Bye bye.